Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu diesem kleinen Fliegermagazin-Video. Ich bin Thomas Borchert, Chefredakteur des Fliegermagazins und wir wollen euch ein bisschen was erzählen über die Neuheiten, die Cirrus für die 2022 Modellreihe der SR-Flugzeuge eingeführt hat. Und dazu sprechen wir mit Ivy McIver, Director SR Product Line. Hello Ivy, good to see you. Hello, how are you? Very good. So uh, it was only yesterday, the day before yesterday, that you introduced some the, the new model lineup for 2022. And uh, maybe we could go through the news, uh, starting with the more expectable things. Um, you introduced new paint schemes, and there's a yeah. very nice rosé shade, I would call it, to avoid <laughs> the pink word. <laughs> A lot of people are calling it rosé all day, but I don't know if that's appropriate for an aviation color. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I like it. Yes, we actually worked with Sherwin Williams to reformulate our paint system, and in the process of doing that, we were able to explore a lot more uh, paint colors, right? So some effects and some different formulations of the paint. So we took the opportunity um, to to reformulate some of the existing more popular colors like monarch and corso red um, and athens and then introduce some new colors we brought in some new colors into the mix canyon um baja which is a metallicized bimini blue um, evolution red which is a really really rich deep red color um neptune as i mentioned uh which is the new athens and zanzibar which has a almost a bright orange metallic um hue uh, but oh. let's not uh let's not forget the powdery hue of the Himalayan salts um for the Ari exclusive to the Ari Bay special edition that's where you're going to see that Himalayan salt color so there's two new colors for the Ari Bay uh the Mykonos which is a, a a bright blue and the Himalayan salt that you'll see in all of our marketing materials and the Himalayan salt is actually what the what, what I would call a very nice pink Yes, right? that's correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, and it's had, uh, you know, uh, the plane that we flew around um, in December to actually film all of our promotional videos was that Himalayan salt color, and it was received very well across the country, urban and rural, male, female, I, you know, everyone actually really quite liked it. Yeah, I can relate to that totally. Yes. Yeah. All right. The USB ports, obviously, you can now charge your laptop while you're flying with yes, 60 absolutely. watts, I believe. So, yes, 60 watts. So um, we actually introduced a second USB-C port. So now there's two USB-A and two USB-C power ports. Um, and that USB-C power port is that high power. So it'll charge your laptop, your tablet, and it charges your other devices really quickly. Um, you did light the step, so you had this spectra lighting, I believe you call it, which lights up the airplane from the outside very nicely. Um, but now also the, the step that you use to step onto the wing is lit and uh, there's even the logo visible, right? Correct. So we expanded that spectra portfolio to include the illuminated steps and it sort of incorporates three things. One is a light on top of the step, so you can see it when you're stepping on and off in the night. One is the the end cap is actually backlit and it says Sears Aircraft on it. So it's just a little style detail. Uh, but I think the biggest change is that um, is that projection of the logo on the ramp. So you'll see a really sharp, crisp projection of the Sears logo. It's almost like a red carpet or a welcome mat bring, inviting you into the airplane. Uh, and then it's surrounded by a softer light that illuminates the ramp as you get off, just, uh, you know, If you're flying at night, it, it makes it a little safer to step off the step. Now, everybody who's flown a Cirrus knows that the baggage door might get in your way at times because it kind of will try to close back while you're loading something into it. You changed that too. Right, so we actually replaced the strap that held the baggage door on with a, a, a positive soft open mechanism that actually holds the door open once you open it. Um, that And it holds it open just past 90 degrees, so it's a little bit easier to load bigger things into the baggage compartment. The other nice thing about the baggage door is that the interior panel, the pocket's been expanded, so it makes it a lot more useful. You could put a couple of quarts of oil in there as well. As I, t I tended to put two quarts of oil in the fuel sump um, into right. the pocket, and that was that was a really nice space for that. 
Now, the most surprising announcement, at least to me, was that you managed to, as uh, Cyril says, managed to get up to nine knots of speed increase just mm -hmm. out of aerodynamic enhancements. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. What does up to nine knots exactly mean? I mean, um, mm -hmm. how likely am I to see those nine knots? Yeah, that's a great, great question. So what we really wanted to do um, is see if there was efficiencies that we could find anywhere on the exterior of the of the plane um, to make the plane faster. So, you know, it's a lot harder to make the plane faster by um, adding more power or, uh, you know, changing the power plant or, or something like that you can achieve that speed increase by reducing the drag as well. So we really kind of took a fine tooth comb to the whole airplane to look at, you know, seams and sealant and anywhere that we could add fairings or refine any of the air, of the surfaces just to make it a little bit more aerodynamic, optimize the airflow and, and see where we could find some drag reduction and increase the speed. So there was two major areas that we identified. It was the wheel pants. Um, and the leading edges of the wing and tail. So first I'll start with the wheel pants. Um, we actually um, reshaped the bottom of the wheel pan. So made the, made the opening where the tire is, made that smaller. So the tolerance around the tire is, is a little bit tighter. Um, and we installed a, a deflective device um, to basically streamline the airflow around the bottom um, and around where the tire sticks out of the right. of the um, of the wheel pan, so that was able to sort of make that uh, that airflow a little bit more dynamic. And we picked up about somewhere between one and one and a half knots down on that on that wheel pan area. It kind of uh, you know depends on the plane. Um, the biggest change was um, to the leading edge of the um, of the wing and the tail. And where we picked that up was actually the seam between the Fiki panels and the paint. Um, so we just smooth that out and kind of change the way that we uh, we treat that seam. Um, and mm -hmm. we were able to see, you know, somewhere between five and a half and seven and a half knots from that wow. transition. Yeah, it was so, actually pretty incredible. Yeah, that, that is really a lot because, I mean, up to nine knots, that means up to, I don't know, 5% or something like that. I mean. Yeah, you know, it's really kind of funny because you think about nine knots, you you see it. Uh, I definitely noticed it flying. Uh, I flew across the country a couple times in December, and I really noticed it on those longer trips. Every time I kind of glanced over at the true airspeed, I, it, I found myself thinking, wow, this plane's really fast. Um, so, it, you know, obviously you see a, um, a bigger difference in speed up high. Um, mm -hmm. And if you've got a plane with wheel pants, up in the flight levels that's a that does have the fiki system and that fiki panel treatment that's where you're going to see the, the the biggest difference you know I mean, so you, I mean for 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 a clean wing that doesn't have fiki the increase won't be as big right you'll see one to two knots on a on, right. a, on a clean wing like say let's say right. a clean wing sr20 right and the flight levels you mean the american definition of flight levels so above if, uh, flight level 180. i was mostly flying somewhere between 10 and 15,000 during my sort of four away around the country. And I was pretty consistently seeing six or seven knots faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was in a turbo, I assume. That was in a turbo. Yep. Right. Would it, would it work the same for an, for a normally aspirated 22? Yeah. It's, it's really just a Delta, right? So mm -hmm. again, because we're getting that speed, not from a power increase, but from a drag reduction, um, it's, it's really just, you know, that that delta, you're going to see that same delta regardless of of model. It's just the right. the altitude is what makes a little bit of a difference. Right. The SR20 then will not profit as much because there's no Fiki uh, right. de-iced SR20. Yep. Right. Um, is that cha speed change reflected in the in the uh, POH for the cruise settings? Yeah, that's a great question. No, we didn't change any of the numbers in the POH because the baseline. Um, the baseline speed changed uh, such a small amount. We didn't do all of the um, like retesting and, and mm -hmm. uh, recalibration of all the POH numbers. Big question for Europe. Uh, with the tighter wheel pants and the change in the wheel pants, do you think it will be more stress on the wheel pants when you're operating from soft fields? I don't. And I operated actually from a lot of snow. 
um, during December flying around. So, right. uh, it, you know, it's, it's kind of our winter version of grass. Um, but we didn't change the clearance from the bottom of the wheel pant to the, to the tarmac. See. So mm -hmm. as long as you're keeping your tires at the correct tire pressure, it shouldn't be any mm -hmm. difference on grass or, uh, or any other soft field. Right. Finally, probably also a question that's often asked, um, retrofit. Can you retrofit? Mm -hmm. Probably the wheel pants, yes. The Fiki uh, wing bonding thing there, probably not, right? Right, exactly. So we don't have immediate plans to offer those wheel pants in the, uh, for the aftermarket and a retrofit. But much like a lot of things that could possibly be retrofit, you might see that sometime in the future. Right. Okay. What did I forget to ask? Uh, so one thing that we skipped over was the Sears IQ updates. So that's our, uh, our app that actually connects with the airplane and gives you an airplane status. We added access to your tech pubs as well as the locator. And then for 2022, we added two major features. One was a maintenance minder. And then the right. other thing is my trips. So I can go and I can see all of the journeys that I took. It's almost like a journey log. So all these things must come at a price. Well, how did the pricing change with the 2022 model year? Yep, so uh, the, the price increase was um, roughly about 5%. It kind of varies per model. So for a base SR20, it's uh, 519,900, so 519,900. For the SR22, it's 714,500. And for the 22T, it's 919500 Right. And that's all U.S. dollars, obviously. That's correct. Yep. Right. And then uh, while we're at prices, I mean, the, the top of the line model, including pretty much everything, that's your Arrive uh, line of models, right? How much are those? Yep. So those are 1.2. All right. Thank you so much, Ivy. Um, I, I need to come by and fly it at some point, obviously. It was my pleasure. I would love to fly with you. Hopefully, I will see you uh, over at Aerofriedrichshafen here in a couple of months, and uh, we'll set aside some time to go flying. Perfect. Thank you so much. Ivy McIver from Cirrus Aircraft. Thanks. My pleasure, Thomas. Thank you.